Hello folks. Well, it doesn't happen very often, but I removed my imaging train from my big refractor. And that's because, well, for two reasons. I finally finished my last narrowband target of the season. I haven't processed it yet. I'll probably finish it in a couple of days. And the other reason is I want to remove this reducer. Um, oh, by the way, if you're not familiar with this imaging train, this is my ASI 1600mm cool camera. I got a filter wheel here, I got a spacer, and I got a reducer here. And I, I want to remove the, the reducer because I want longer focal length for, for galaxy season, and I, I want to slow down my setup because broadband data, you know, my exposures are, are short enough as it is. I don't want higher speed for that. And, you know, since I've got this off now, I'm debating... Should I put it back on with the Hotec flattener, or should I just start trying OSC imaging, you know, one-shot color imaging? I've got this QHY10 I've hardly ever used, and this is this is the, the QHY10 spacer that I, I just put on my Hotec flattener here so you can see what it looks like, and I am debating which one should I go with for Galaxy Seeds, you know? You know, for a lot of people, it's not a big decision. You use one camera one week, try the other camera the next week. But I'm, I'm kind of stubborn. You know, when I put something together, I catch my flats. I stick with that setup. I use the same flats for months at a time. And so I'm debating which one should I use. Now, peer pressure, of course, a couple of guys that I'm not going to name here. I always talk about them in my other videos. They're telling me what you nuts, Chuck, you stick with the mono camera, of course. But, you know, <laughs> it's not easy using a, a, a sensitive camera in my area. You know, if you saw my last video, I think game 75 works well for me, but I am down to 30 second exposures. You know, taking off the reducer and going with the Hotec, that might slow me down a bit. Maybe I'll get up to one minute if I'm lucky. But still, yeah, I'll, I'll, all of those subs coming through, you know, it's filling up my hard drive. It's going to be lots of data to stack. Whereas, maybe I can get away with, you know, th three-minute exposures, maybe five-minute exposures. I really don't remember. I have I rarely ever use this camera, but I'm sure I can do much longer exposures with, with this less sensitive CCD camera. Um... You know, but uh, uh, another, some benefits of, of this camera, and they're big benefits of, of the mono camera, is that it has higher resolution and smaller pixel size, so I'll be able to pull off more details with the galaxies. This, this camera also has a built-in hub, and it's USB 3.0. So downloading the images is way faster than this thing, which is only 2.0. And when you're dealing with huge data files, it does make a difference. I've seen it. And the built-in hub is especially useful. If I go with this camera, it's going to be a, a, a big cable management change. I'm going to have to put in a, a bigger hub. Um, uh, well, a bigger hub. Maybe it's not that big of a deal and being dramatic. Um, well... I'd like to hear what you guys think about this this situation. What would you want to do? Because another thing is, I'm not going to win any accolades for broadband. My data is going to suck no matter what I do. It's just, I have another neighbor turning on their backyard light now, and it's just terrible here. And, you know, if, if my data's not going to be great anyway, why not just have some fun and play around with one-shot color? Which is kind of another thing is, I've heard people say, no, it's, when you're processing one-shot color, it's a lot more difficult and takes longer to get that data right than mono data. Now, it will, I'm thinking, well, wait a minute. I'm dealing with four filters here, stacking four filters, working with each filter, combining them all. Maybe they're talking about once all the data is stacked, combined, at that point, the mono data is easier to work with than this one-shot color data because the, the processing that leads up to it, definitely a lot more work goes into this. Um, come on. <laughs> and what else do I want to say here? I'm just curious, what do you guys think? What would you guys do? You, 
you're not going to win. Forget winning any accolades. I don't even care about that. I just want to have fun, you know? I'll get out my accolades with, with narrowband and solar imaging. I got that covered. Um, uh, what else I want to say? Well, that's all I've got to say. What, what, do you, what do you guys think? I, I'd really like to hear your opinion because I'm sure I, I'm forgetting some points here. And I want to hear what um, everybody thinks, not just the two guys I keep talking to all the time. Oh, and one more thing. I actually have a, a narrowband filter. I mean, not a narrowband. I have a light pollution filter buried deep in here. This is kind of an interesting setup. It, had to, it took me a while to think about how this would go together. And if you, if you want to stick around, uh, I'll show you how I how I, I would set this up if I were to use this on my refractor. So uh, anyone else who doesn't want to see that, uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you later, folks. Okay, so uh, let me show you now. Normally, um, this is a... Forget that I have a, a light pollution filter buried deep in here. Um, I've got the camera. I've got my spacing between the Hotec and the camera. That's the required space. I think it's 55 mm of spacing. Uh, or maybe less because there's some spacing here before you actually get to the sensor. Um, but anyway, what you would normally do is in a setup like this, I have a 2-inch focuser. This is the 2-inch filter right here. I would actually, oh, I would actually put um, an extension tube onto my Hotec. Normally, the Hotec comes with its own self-centering, uh, a rubber self-centering system that you could put in the telescope straw tube. But from my experience, it is such a piece of junk. Let me tell you, it kept, that rubber kept getting stuck in my draw tube. It took forever to get out. So, And it wasn't easy taking it off of this flander either. I really had to rip it apart. And once I did, I threw it in the garbage, never to be seen again. You know, that's what I would recommend. Don't use it. Um, it Maybe you'll have better luck, but I, I had terrible luck. I know someone else had had terrible luck with it. And this, this draw tube, or this extension tube, is actually, it came with my Orion reducer. But it can be used here, too. So I would put this on the, the Hotec. And then, <clears throat> I would thread on this 2-inch light pollution filter, and then stick that in the draw tube. And that's if, though, you have a compression ring system set up. I don't have a compression ring. I All my stuff is threaded, and I can't use this because my 2-inch filter is not threaded in front. It would, I wouldn't be able to thread it on. So I can't use a 2-inch filter unless, <clears throat> and I haven't looked, unless they sell 2-inch filters that are threaded on both the rear and the front. Do they have those? I never looked. So for my system... I wouldn't use a two-inch filter, and I wouldn't use this extension either. I would only use this, and this is threaded, and this would thread right onto my draw tube because I'm all threaded. So where's my filter? Well, where's my light pollution filter? It's not here. <laughs> I'm taking off my spacers. I have a one inch, a 1.25 inch light pollution filter in there. Um, and how I got that in there is, uh, I'll show you. Now, if there's a better way, please let me know, because this sounds really kludgy, you know? Uh, I buried it deep in there because I wanted to get, since it's 1.25 inch, I wanted to get it as close to the camera sensor as possible. There's the filter. A 1.25 inch. I wanted to get it as close to the camera sensor as possible so there's less vignetting. And here's a little donut adapter.
So I had this adapter here that I threaded my filter onto like that and then I buried it deep inside that spacer to get it as close to the camera sensor as possible. What do you think of that setup? Is that is that a silly way to do it? Uh, I'd like to know what you think and uh, I don't know what else I've got to say here. Anyway, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think of all this. I, I did a lot of talking. Um, see you folks. I have finally removed Okay, here's my first screw up. Finally removed But anyway, um I give up. Hello folks. I am back in front of the camera. You know how much I hate doing this? No. Nope. No. Nope. I don't hate doing it, I'm just kidding. I want to remove this producer. We're already in the middle of galaxy season, and I thought if I remove the deucer, remove the deucer, <laughs> remove the deucer.